Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, and today I want to talk about what weapon is right for you in Monster Hunter Rise. If you guys are new to Monster Hunter, new to the series, jumping in for the first time, and you go to your item box and you realise there are 14 weapons and you're like, what the hell do I do? Where do I begin? This seems crazy. Then this video, I want to quickly break down what each of the weapons have to offer so you can make a decision on what weapon is right for you. It is, however, important to note there is no best weapon in this game. Every weapon is viable, every weapon is great in its own way, but they do also lean more into different playstyles. So really, as the video title suggests, it's about finding what weapon is right for you. So if you do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. And similarly, let us know in the comments down below what weapons you have been enjoying most. So to begin with, the Sword and Shield is one of Monster Hunter's most versatile weapons. It's a weapon that provides hunters with a vast array of options and unique playstyles, offering fast combos, great mobility and basic defensive options. It's a weapon that is both great in the hands of beginners and veterans alike. It's also the only weapon that allows you to use items without having to sheath your weapon, meaning you can deploy traps, plant bombs, heal, buff yourself or even support your team at the drop of a hat. Consider using this weapon if you want a good balance of offense, defense, and item utility, or if you want to delve into the world of elemental and status damage, or if you're just new to Monster Hunter. The Dual Blades are one of the fastest attacking weapons in Monster Hunter. Lightning fast combos, unmatched movement speed, split second dashes, and the ability to run like a ninja and rip down a monster's spine like Levi from Attack on Titan. With speed on its side, the dual blades are capable of getting in, dishing out quick burst damage and getting out, all without ever being touched. And being one of the fastest attacking weapons, it's also an exceptional choice for dishing out elemental and status damage, so it really does lend itself to a diverse selection of skill setups. Consider picking up this if you like more fast and nimble playstyles. The longsword has the power of god and anime on its side, so by default it is therefore the strongest weapon in the game. I am of course joking, but it is without a doubt an elegant weapon that perfectly balances both speed and power. Where some of the heavier hitting weapons typically lack mobility as a trade-off, the longsword is the perfect blend, allowing you to remain mobile, counter incoming attacks and dish out great damage, all whilst looking like Himura Kenshin. It's also a weapon that has a relatively simple moveset, making it a great option to pick up if you're new to the series, or perhaps you just want a weapon that is reliable without too steep a learning curve. Consider picking up this weapon if you're either new to Monster Hunter or you like anime. The Great Sword is one of the original weapons in Monster Hunter. This offers incredible power at the cost of mobility, allowing you to dish out devastatingly powerful attacks, provided you can time it right. Fortunately, in Monster Hunter Rise, even this famously slow weapon has newfound mobility that gives you new and exciting ways to dive in and exploit those openings. While not a hugely complex weapon on the move front, the biggest challenge with this weapon comes from its long wind-up animations. So while it is relatively simple to pick up, it can take a while to master. Consider picking up this weapon if you like big damage numbers. The Hammer is one of Monster Hunter's big damage, heavy hitting powerhouse weapons. If you like massive numbers, epic earth shattering attacks, and the added bonus of being able to knock out the monster, then the Hammer has your name written all over it. With a simple moveset and relatively decent mobility for such a heavy weapon, this is also a pretty good pick for beginners, while simultaneously offering unmatched KO potential in the hands of an experienced hunter. Consider picking up this weapon if you like the idea of smashing monsters in the face with a giant hammer. The Hunting Horn has, for a very long time, been one of the best weapons you are probably not using. A weapon that is both capable of dealing devastating impact damage to knock out monsters, all whilst simultaneously letting you buff your team with funky beats. Thanks to some fantastic changes in Monster Hunter Rise, it's now easier than ever to pick up this weapon and destroy anything that stands in your way, all whilst styling on the monster. Consider picking up this weapon if you like to both dish out big impact damage to KO the monster, and you like the idea of supporting your team with powerful buffs. The Lance is one of Monster Hunter's iron wall weapons, the impenetrable defense, the warrior that stands in the face of absolute destruction and says not today. While the Lance lacks the conventional mobility that most other weapons have, what it does have is a shield that is so strong it can block and counter almost anything that is thrown at you. So if you want to be able to face down even the toughest of monsters and maintain your onslaught of attacks, then the Lance might just be what you're looking for. The Gun Lance is the other steadfast iron defense of Monster Hunter. This weapon allows you to stand your ground and stare down even the toughest of monsters without so much as flinching. The Strong Shield allows you to firm incoming attacks and quickly follow up with devastating damage. It is also a weapon of two halves, allowing not only for pinpoint piercing attacks, but also explosive shells. So if you're someone who likes to take on the role of a tank in other games, then the Gun Lance is quite literally that. The Switch Axe is the original transforming weapon, part axe and part sword. 
This weapon will see you seamlessly switching from axe mode to sword mode mid-combat, whilst dishing out devastating explosive damage. It's an incredibly fun weapon to use, and while on the surface, the notion of having to juggle two modes might sound a little much, in reality, it's a pretty simple weapon to pick up. The axe mode allows for greater mobility alongside long and high reaching attacks, meanwhile the sword mode, while a little slower, is your biggest damage dealer, allowing you to power up the weapon and access your signature move that, let's be honest, belongs in a Michael Bay movie. Consider this weapon if you want some variety and some big damage options. The charge blade is one of Monster Hunter's more technical weapons. It is both a sword and shield, and an axe, allowing you to go seamlessly from one mode to the other to dish out incredible damage. The Sword and Shield mode offers great mobility and great defensive options, meanwhile the axe portion provides you with great damage potential, high and far reaching attacks, and depending on the type of charge blade you choose, great elemental or impact damage outputs. Consider using this weapon if you want a range of attack styles, some good defense, and great damage potential. The Insect Glaive is the pick if you want to become the King of the Skies, an aerial mobility master. Part Staff, Part Kinsect, this weapon has an array of fast, fluid, and relatively long-reaching attacks thanks to the Sun Wukong style staff, or glaive, should I say. Meanwhile, you also have access to a little companion of sorts, the Kinsect, which you'll use to gather extracts from the monster that you're fighting to buff up your hunter and your attacks. It's a fun, stylish, and completely different style of weapon whose mobility also synergizes incredibly well with the new wirebug mechanics. So if you never want to stay in one place for too long, consider picking up this weapon. The bow is one of Monster Hunter's ranged offerings, and honestly one of the best entry points to ranged hunting. While it may be a little more complex in terms of moves when compared to the two bow guns, the bow requires considerably less ammo management, in fact it has infinite arrows, the only thing you have to worry about are coatings. So if you're coming over from a melee weapon, it'll be the easiest thing to pick up without having to spend time worrying about ammo types, bullets and the like. It offers great mobility, a broad range of attack options, and it's also hella stylish. Consider picking up this if you're testing out ranged weapons for the first time. The Light Bowgun is one of the more quick and nimble ranged offerings. Bowguns in Monster Hunter, both light and heavy, have relatively simple movesets, you have no fancy combos to learn or complex button inputs. Where the Bowguns offer depth and variety, however, is in their wide array of available ammo choices, ranging from simple bullets and pellets, through status and element inflicting shots, all the way up to high explosive ordinances. Bowguns are incredibly versatile and offer some fantastic combat options, so if you're the sort of person that prefers to fight from a distance and you want an arsenal of varied tools, all while staying fast and nimble, the Light Bowgun might just be for you. And then finally, the Heavy Bowgun is the meatiest of all the ranged weapons. As the name suggests, it's a big old gun, your heavy weapons platform, capable of dishing out devastating damage from afar. In previous games, this also came with relatively slow movement, and while that does still somewhat apply in Rise, thanks to some of the fantastic new additions, the Heavy Bowgun is more mobile than ever. With the ability to sidestep, evade, and use the silk by move to get around, you are no longer a sitting duck on the battlefield. So if you want to become a mobile war machine, then consider picking up the Heavy Bowgun. But that, my friends, is a very quick rundown on the weapons and hopefully some direction to help you decide what might be right for you. Of course, if you want to learn much more about the weapons, we will be producing an in-depth series of weapon tutorials, the weapon workshops for all of the 14 weapons, so do keep an eye out for those. They'll be on the channel over the coming weeks, but for the time being, hopefully that helps get you started. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 Paradise Central and Vestmore streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.